All right, hey guys, I'm going to show you how to name esters. Step one, you have to be able to identify what an ester is. And an ester is any carbon chain that has a double bonded oxygen in the middle and a single bonded oxygen to the exact same carbon. What you'll notice is that the carbon chain is actually broken up into two separate carbon chains. That's a big deal, and it's going to play a role in how we name it. So, to name esters, first you find the chain that has the, well, the carbon chain that has the double bonded oxygen on it. Only one of them is going to have the double bonded oxygen because the single bonded oxygen is what's breaking the carbon chain into two separate chains. So, double bonded oxygen is here, and that carbon chain is one, two, three, four carbons long. A four carbon long carbon chain starting from the double bonded oxygen as an ester gets the name butan O8. Bute for four carbons and for the fact that they're all single bonded together and O8 is what represents the double bonded oxygen and single bonded oxygen right here. The question is what about this one two carbon chain sticking out of the single bonded oxygen? Well, a two carbon chain gets the prefix F, and because it's hanging off, we call it ethyl. There is a space here. This is one of the few kinds of molecules that have a space in the official name. This is ethyl butanoate. Four carbon chain with the ester linkage to a two carbon chain. Try it again with me, please. Here's my double bonded oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. And they're all single bonded together. We'll call it octanoate. And how many carbons are sticking out of the other one? One, two, three, four, five. We call this pentyl because it's a five carbon chain sticking off the oxygen. Pentyl octanoate. Pretty sweet. Now where is the ester linkage here? Remember the ester linkage has a double bonded oxygen and a single bonded oxygen. So carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's hept and it's all single bonds along that chain so it's heptanoate. Now what you'll notice is that there are things hanging off of the heptanoate. It looks to me like starting at carbon six, we have an oxo group, and starting at carbon four, we have a bromo group. You guys remember how we deal with substituents. Four bromo dash six oxo dash, and this just goes straight onto the front of the heptanoate. This is all one word, and it rec it's what tells us we have our seven carbon chain with the ester linkage, a bromine on carbon four, and an oxo on carbon six. One thing to note is that the carbon with the double bonded oxygen in the ester linkage is always carbon one. I don't care where other things are connected. And don't forget we do have a one carbon chain sticking out of the oxygen here, so we call it methyl. There is a space here, methyl, space, 4-bromo-6-octo-heptanoate. You could have double bonds, you could have a myriad of other things going on here, and you could even have substituents connected to the methyl. You may be wondering, what do we do if there's no carbons connected over here? What if this was just, you know, a hydrogen? The answer is, that's not an ester anymore, we call it a carboxylic acid, and you'll name it as a carboxylic acid. So, who cares about esters? We all do, because esters smell fruity. Ethyl nonanoate, so that's a nine carbon chain with the ester linkage and then two, actually smells like grape. Propyl ethanoate smells like pear. A whole bunch of the esters smell fruity. You can Google it, make whatever flavor and scent you want. Now, because there are oxygens hanging out especially double bonded ones, and the oxygens are in close proximity. These compounds are polar. Hopefully it's obvious they're less polar than carboxylic acids because carboxylic acids don't have an extra carbon chain to bulk them up. 
but they're even a little less polar than alcohols, something to keep in mind. And because they're polar, they are generally soluble in water. Now, the cool thing is that you can use ester linkages to form polymers. We actually form esters by reacting an alcohol with a carboxylic acid. You can take a look and for my video on esterification for how that happens. Actually, I'll write that here for you. Esterification. And if you have molecules that have two alcohol groups on them and two carboxylic acid groups, you could get a carboxylic acid reacting with the alcohol, that reacts with another one of these, that reacts with another one of these, and it goes on and on and on to form a huge long chain, which is what we call a polymer. But anyways, that's asterisk. Be able to name them. Good luck.